Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Imbrato of ProtestChild.com. Coming to you from Knock, Ireland. I am, uh, this is my home base for the week. I'm staying in this lovely Irish cottage called St. Teresa's. It used to be a bed and breakfast. Now it's privately owned and the people here, uh, wonderful host, uh, extending hospitality to me. I've been sleeping very well, but I'm telling you every night when I go to bed, I am absolutely exhausted. So I don't know if I'm getting worn down, uh, or just the emotional energy that I am uh, uh, expending. It's uh, just causing me to sleep very, very well at night, be very, very tired. I'm definitely going to bed much later than I'm normally used to going to bed in, in the United States because in the United States, even in the longest days of the year, it's dark by 9, 30, 10 o'clock here doesn't really get dark till about 11 o'clock. Uh, sundown is about 10 o'clock and I just find myself staying awake till 11, 1130. And now I'm sleeping later and later each and every day. I, I see that I, I didn't wake up until 730 this morning going to bed at 1130. So I got my eight hours sleep. So today I am going to the Human Life International office here in Knock and speaking with a wonderful young lady who works for them, uh, HLI in Knock. It's one of the many uh, offices that they have. I guess the main office is up in the north. Uh, uh, and then they have pr uh, crisis pregnancy centers, pregnancy resource centers really would be the proper name for them. Uh, in the United States, and I think really here, Pregnancy Resource Centers. They've gone through a Pregnancy Resource Centers. They used to be called Crisis Pregnancy Centers, CPCs, and then uh, Pregnancy Help Centers, right, PHC, but now the common name is Pregnancy Resource Centers. So it's interesting, in the last um, few days, I'm learning more and more yesterday, I, and I, I don't remember if I mentioned it, uh, but no, I didn't mention it yesterday, but yesterday afternoon learned an awful lot about Irish history and uh, not enough or deep enough for me to uh, process it, but surely to whet my appetite to learn more. And one of the things that I came to know is, uh, that, uh, the, the Easter Rising, the Easter Rising, the Easter Rebellion in 1916, April of 1916 was an armed insurrection in Ireland. During Easter week, the Rising was launched by Irish Republicans against British rule in Ireland with the aim of establishing an independent Irish Republic, which came about, uh, six years later. Uh, in uh, 1922, I believe. And uh, O'Connell Street in Dublin, uh, I guess is named after Daniel O'Connor, who was one of the leaders of this group, uh, was instrumental in bringing about uh, Irish independence. Uh, organized by a seven-man militia council, of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the Rising began on Easter Monday, 24 April 1916, and lasted for six days. Member of the Irish Volunteers, led by schoolmaster and uh, Irish language activist Patrick Purse, joined by smaller uh, uh, Irish citizen army of James Connolly and 200 women. <laughs> See strategically important buildings in Dublin and proclaim the Irish Republic. The British Army brought in thousands of reinforcements as well as artillery and a gunboat. There was street fighting uh, on the routes into the city center where the rebels slowed the British advance and inflicted many casualties. Elsewhere in Dublin, the fighting can, um, uh, mainly consisted of sniping and long range gun battles. All right. So it wasn't, uh, uh, 
Daniel McConnell. I'm getting my uh, names mixed up. See, I have not processed this at all. But surely I am going to uh, learn more about Irish history uh, and, and as I have become a, 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 an Irish citizen, I think it's important. Uh, the commanders of the Irish rebels were Patrick Purse, James Connolly, Tom Clark, Sean Mc. Mada, Joseph Plunkett, Eamon Clent, and Thomas McDonough. There was 1,200 in Dublin, two to 3,000 volunteers elsewhere, but they took little part in the fighting. 16,000 British troops and 1,000 armed um, RIC. I don't know what that is in Dublin by the end of the week. Casualties and losses, 66 killed, 16 executed, unknown wounded on the uh, uh, the uh, Republic side, and 143 killed, 397 wounded on the British side, 260 civilians killed, total of 485 killed. This was the uh, Irish Revolutionary period from 1912 to 1923. So a lot to learn, all right, a lot to learn about Irish heritage. And I was uh, tutored yesterday by a man named uh, Paul, uh, and he actually incorporated the significance of the Shrine of Knock, the apparition of Knock, into the history of uh, of Ireland, all right? And again, you know, a couple of hours and just a lot the process. So a lot of studying to do. And I've always been uh, interested in history. And uh, now this uh, whole development of uh, Ireland history, especially the freedom of Ireland that brought about the Constitution of Ireland with the beautiful preamble of the Constitution of Ireland has really whet my appetite and I will learn more. Now, yesterday was the 4th of July in the United States, right? Um, and I was just telling my host, uh, uh, and of course, they actually are originally from the United States. They lived in the Los Angeles area. So we had a conversation about how the 4th of July in the United States is noisy, celebratory, that more and more and more each year people shoot off fireworks in their neighborhoods. Of course, fireworks are prevalent throughout the country, every city in the country, uh, and how noisy it is generally in the United States. And then around the 4th of July, very, very noisy with all the fireworks. And how peaceful and quiet it's here in Ireland, but specifically in this area of Knock, this peaceful, prayerful area of Knock. So, so peaceful. So yesterday I had a, a very quiet and peaceful day. I actually went to the shrine again, uh, did the rosary outside the apparition chapel with a dear friend of mine, Anastasia from Tanzania, was actually recognized by some people in Scotland and uh, then spent some time in the Adoration Chapel and uh, just, uh, again, was able to walk a couple of miles. Uh, I, I am staying right down the street from the shrine, so I walked to the shrine, walked around the shrine. Uh, again, Adoration Chapel, uh, in the Apparition Chapel, uh, outside the Apparition Chapel, and then I had lunch. And then went over to the uh, Shrine Hotel, the Knock Hotel, and sat there and got this wonderful schooling of the history of Ireland and how the apparition of Knock fit into this history of Ireland. And the importance of the Catholic faith in Ireland, which again is becoming uh, attacked, it's attacked, it's becoming diminished, and the role of everybody in this uh, reduction of the faith in Ireland, which might be more dramatic than it is in the United States. Uh, not that the numbers are as dramatic, but definitely, relatively speaking, because Ireland was such a Catholic country, 
that the, uh, the the decrease in the faith, the reduction of the faith here in Ireland is a very stunning, a very dramatic. And so I think everybody agrees, the Catholics in Ireland agree. And of course, I've talked about this, that Ireland needs to be re-evangelized, needs to come to repentance, uh, do reparation, uh, and uh, that we are, I, I, the question I asked this gentleman was, how does he see that coming about? He sees it led by bishops, in particular one bishop. I uh, I don't disagree, but there would be an act of divine intervention on that bishop or the bishops. And I think it's no different in the United States here. I've said there's no going back, right? There is no going back to where we were before without a significant act of divine intervention. What type of miracle that looks like, but we are talking about a miracle. What type of miracle that looks like? I personally think it'll be a Eucharistic miracle. Uh, he says that it could be brought about by Carlos Acuna, uh, who uh, I don't know if you're aware of, but he was a young man who was just... Uh, uh, I don't know if he was canonized as saint, beatif beatified, right? I think he's blessed, blessed Carlos Acuna. Uh, and of course, the cause for his sainthood is up. Uh, young man died young, uh, used the internet to evangelize, uh, was into Eucharistic miracles. And now all over the world, the Eucharistic miracles and the uh, study that Carlos and his uh, devotion to the Eucharist is uh, traveling all over the world, along with his relics. And uh, uh, could that be what spurs on the the uh, act of divine intervention very possibly could be. In the United States, we're having this three-year Eucharistic revival. Surely, as I've said before, there can be no Eucharistic revival without uh, without a revival in the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of reconciliation. So, um, I, I, my, my pro-life ministry here in Ireland, I said, is couched in the, in the bigger picture of repentance, the reconversion of Ireland, the re-evangelization of Ireland. And, uh, what, of course, presses on my mind and my heart is why me with my Irish heritage, which really is only recently come to, um, even my knowledge, right? The depth of my Irish heritage, especially the clerical Irish heritage. Uh, why, why do I have a first class relic of St. Patrick, which is uh, virtually unheard of? Although I met a woman on Saturday at the rally for life, the March for life, who had a relic of, of St. Patrick. <laughs> Uh, but, but it's rare and not that there aren't relics of St. Patrick all throughout Ireland, but for some reason it kept under lock and key. And, uh, there is a school of thought that these relics need to be taken out, publicly venerated, uh, publicly professed and processed, uh, throughout Ireland for the re-evangelization and the re-conversion of Ireland. Uh, a couple of people have said that I need to move to Ireland. I'm not there yet by any means, but it's something I'm praying about. I cannot see me permanently living over here. I've made it very clear that if I do live over here, uh, it would have to be here in Knock. I could not see myself living any place in Ireland. There are some spectacular views in Ireland. You guys know I love scenery. That's why I live near the beach. That's why in Albuquerque, I bought the house with the balcony overlooking downtown Albuquerque, the Rio Grande Valley, the Sandia Mountains. I love that type of scenery. I love God's creation. But honestly, God's creation is everywhere here in Ireland. I mean, I, I look out this window and, and, and the view is spectacular. It's green. It's lush. It's God's creation. And, uh, but I, I mean, to live over here, uh, first of all, uh, I, I don't think I could live year round because I don't think I could handle the, the winters, uh, very, very well. 
Uh, I don't think I could afford to live over here, live part time here. But one thing I know uh, that I, and I'm not worried about is that I could come over here for any length of time. I could come over here and be extended hospitality in any number of places or throughout Ireland. I could come and and live. Uh, people would extend hospitality to a Catholic priest, an Irish Catholic priest, even though I have a Sicilian last name. Um, and I'd be able to travel around the country and be afforded hospitality. So that is something that I am absolutely not worrying about. What I'm doing right now is making sure I don't get ahead of the Holy Spirit and I'm discerning what the Holy Spirit has in store for me. I don't think it's full time in Ireland, but it may be uh, repetitive or continuous trips to Ireland. Like I said, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm Father Stephen Abrado of protestchildkilling.com. Protestchildkilling.com. I'm going to HLI today. Uh, meet with some folks over in HLI. I have a three o'clock mass my time here. So that would be 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock East Coast time. So those devotees of Our Lady of America, it is first Wednesday, the day we dedicate to the pure heart of St. Joseph every first Wednesday. But it is also uh, Elizabeth of Portugal and also uh, St. Um, uh, Zacharia, St. Zacharia. Um, who St. Anthony, St. Anthony Zach, uh, Zacharia says, in his mercy, God has chosen us unworthy as we are out of the world to serve him. We go forth in goodness to bear the greatest possible purity of love in patience. So St. Anthony, physician and priest, teach me to heal bodies and souls in my volunteer work. All right. And so, um, uh, Interesting, all right, because I am calling people to volunteer in pregnancy resource centers to spend time in front of abortion facilities here, these modern day Calvaries. And, uh, and of course, today is First Wednesday where we honor the pure heart of St. Joseph and he talks about uh, extending or uh, going forth in goodness to bear the greatest possible purity of love in patience. So St. Anthony Zacharia, uh, intercede for us. So 10 o'clock Eastern time, I'll be doing mass. It may be a few minutes late. Uh, definitely, it'll be posted no later than 11 Eastern time, uh, the mass in honor of St. Anthony Zacharia uh, to memorialize and honor St. Joseph on this first Wednesday. All right, so uh, let's uh, go to, I want to just close this temporarily. Let's go to my Facebook page. Last night, beautiful, beautiful house mass. So again, the, 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 the mass was right around the corner. 50 people in this house. 50 people in a house for a house mass. I, I am, I would think, I, I can't think of a, 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 a more attended, uh, uh, house mass than the house mass that I did last night. 50 people over, uh, 42, 43 people received communion. Uh, 50 people, I'm told, were in the house. Uh, but we did the devotion to the Holy Face, uh, which, let me see if I can find that now. Can I find it? Yep, right here. Oh, let me get my relics out too. My relic of Padre Pio. My relic of St. Patrick. But of course, the holy face of Jesus. I've had a devotion to the holy face of Jesus for about 12 years now. Um, going back to when I was in Our Lady of Sorrows. And I got the holy face of Jesus from the Shroud of Turin. Uh, when I uh, took got two images, the whole shroud and the holy face of Jesus 
uh, for my parish in Bernalillo. Here's the devotion to the holy face of Jesus. And uh, we did this devotion last night. It's the second time that I have done this devotion here in Ireland. I think the third time overall. Our Lady to Blessed Maria, uh, Perina de Michelli, uh, in these times of sensuality and hatred against God and the church, a divine remedy is required. And that remedy is the holy face of Jesus. So will the holy face of Jesus bring about a devotion to the holy face of Jesus, bring about that act of divine intervention, that miraculous act of divine intervention to bring about the reconversion of Ireland, right? Will uh, St. Patrick and a devotion, a re-energizing of devotion to St. Patrick bring about uh, the re-evangelization, the reconversion of Ireland? Uh, these are things that are pieces of a puzzle. Oh, and we did the chaplet. All right, the chaplet is a bit complex, the chaplet of the holy face. Uh, but the devotion itself is very, very beautiful and very, very, very uh, much a, a part of Ireland. They were talking about how all over the country, uh, once a month, they come together on, I think, the first Tuesday. Now, it's interesting, when I was in uh, Limerick, uh, we did it on a Thursday night. Uh, there was a, a prayer group, and uh, I think I spoke about that back then. All right, so, um, and Padre Pio has a role in in the uh, Shrine of Knock, uh, the statues here in the Shrine of Knock. I found out about that yesterday. Some other people had alluded to it, uh, but I found out more about that yesterday too. St. Uh, Saint Padre Pio's role in the statues that are now in the apparition chapel at Knock. So interesting stuff, lot of stuff. So I'm excited about learning more about Irish history, about the apparition at Knock, uh, the uprising, the Easter uprising, the independence of Ireland, and then the history of Ireland since 1922, I think, is also important because that history since 1922, especially in the last few decades, includes the uh, denigration of the Catholic faith in Ireland, an attack on the Catholic faith in Ireland. In my mind, there is an all-out attack on the Catholic faith in Ireland. And in my mind, um, uh, the Irish good people of Ireland are arming themselves with prayer. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I would say the, the almost a month, and Friday it'll be a month, Friday it'll be four weeks that I've been here. My prayer life is as good as ever, maybe better than ever. These people are prayerful, deep, prayer-abiding, faithful people here. They're praying. But prayer, as you know, and I talk about all the time, should lead to action. Those who hear the word of God and act on it are wise. Those who hear the word of God and don't act on it are fools. And I think what's missing here in Ireland is a clerical leadership. Uh, the clergy rising up and saying no more to the government of Ireland that is suppressing the Catholic faith, attacking the Catholic faith, denigrating the Catholic faith. And I think that uh, in terms of the one bishop uh, 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 rising up, he is the prelate of all of Ireland. Uh, uh, he rising up and uh, leading the faithful to push back against these attacks on the Irish faith, on the Catholic faith. It, it makes sense. I mean, it, it does make sense. So what will spur that? Surely the prayers of the faithful will spur it. Uh, and uh, does there need to be an external, an external, um, uh, intervention, right? Uh, a divine intervention, a miraculous intervention of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What will that look like? What will that look like, 
All right, so I'm going to keep my finger on the pulse. Uh, stay attentive, be attentive uh, to what's going on and constantly ask our Lord, Lord, what's my role? What is your will for me in all of this, right? Uh, as, as I say every day when I pray, right? <clears throat> Lord, show us your will and give us the strength to do your will. Lord, what more can I do today? Right, to unite myself to you on the cross, what more can I do to save a baby's life? What more can we do to abolish abortion? What more can we do to restore the faith? Right? These are the types of questions we should be asking our Lord to reveal to us each and every single day. So a nice, peaceful, prayerful day. It went late last night um, uh, because the Mass didn't start until probably 7.30, um, maybe even later. I think the mass went about an hour. I preached quite a long time. I always complain. So, well, the preacher preached a long time, even though I was the preacher. So, um, so house, mass, and devotion to Holy Face. I put, uh, I posted a picture of the beautiful altar, uh, the people. That was just the kitchen, the picture of the people. And then the little prayer altar dedicated to the Holy Face of Jesus. And then I posted the live stream, the mass. Hmm. Oh, and then it was reposted. Thank you, Lois. All right. For, for that. And I, I think quite a few views. Oh, so she posted the protest pre. I see. I get it. I get it now. We did a mass at the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because it was an ordinary day. We'll see how many views. Oh, that's right. We can't, we can't get the views on here. It won't come up on here. Persevering in the storm. Persevering in the storm was my homily. All right. So what else do we have? Memories. So yesterday I was at Knock, Adoration, Rosary, Venerating the Apparition, Visit the Old Church. Yes, I did visit the Old Church. And of course, some pictures, uh, the, Celt the Celtic uh, Cross. It's just a beautiful, beautiful air. Okay, so Laura Geis and Father Fidelis are in jail. Now, of course, Father Fidelis is Christopher Masinski, uh, Laura Geis. Uh, so I did post uh, how you can uh, send them letters. Uh, they are in the county jail, Nassau County Correctional Center. They always have fancy names for these county jails. They're county jails. That's what they are, right? Um, and so I posted the information about uh, writing to them, posted yesterday uh, about the pilgrimage I'm doing in Jordan and the Holy Land, the end of October, Jordan and the Holy Land with 206 tours. All right, more pictures of Knock, pictures of the cute little cottage, uh, the St. Teresa's Cottage. Uh, their prayer altar downstairs, a uh, beautiful host, uh, uh, this woman and her mother. And again, uh, yesterday I posted about no Independence Day today for uh, the Red Rose Rescuers that are in jail, Father Fidelis and uh, Laura Geis. Lord, have mercy on us. Pray for them. All right. And let's see what's going on now. So tomorrow I head up to Kalala to find out about Bishop John Conmey and some of the Conmey priests. And that starts my hunt Thursday and Friday. I'll be doing ancestry hunting, right? Uh, hunting uh, for where my Conmey ancestors uh, lived, uh, where they were born, uh, and, uh, I know that for the most part it is in Mayo. Some of them, I believe, were from Sligo from that. Uh, uh, Balinar is, uh, I think the area and it is the border area between Mayo and Sligo. So did you, did you, did you see they found cocaine inside the White House? 
shock of shocks, right? Of course. Uh, and then supposedly Hunter Biden went there a few hours after they found the cocaine. The question is, was he there a few hours before they found the cocaine? Is it his cocaine? Whose cocaine is it, right? Uh, we do know that um, in the Obama White House, there was a lot of shenanigans of that type going on. It wouldn't surprise me at all in the Biden White House that uh, these types of shenanigans are going on. Of course, the authorities, the Secret Service, the FBI will all turn a blind eye to whatever Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's brother, right? All the Bidens, the Biden crime family, uh, what indeed they're doing. Uh, they are the most corrupt family that has ever occupied uh, the White House when they turn around and claim that Trump was. There's no way. If actually you look at the children of Donald Trump, um, uh, and then look at the children of Joe Biden. Ashley, of course, is a mess, and everybody knows why she's a mess, because of uh, a direct influence of her own father doing things that she has documented that, of course, are perverse and, and, and immoral and illegal, right? Uh, and then Hunter, what a mess he is. And to think that the mess that Hunter is isn't, uh, to some extent, not completely, but to some extent, uh, 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 a symptom of a dysfunction in the family, right? Uh, but you compare the Biden family with the Trump family. Um, is Trump a wheeler dealer? Y yes, he is. Is he dishonest? Yes, he is. Is he a, a thief, a cheat to the extent that Joe Biden is? A liar to the extent that Joe Biden is no comparison. There's no comparison. And I don't think, and I know for a fact, all right, that Donald Trump has never betrayed his country. There's evidence coming out now uh, that makes it appear that definitely a Biden has sold out the United States to foreign influences for his own benefit, for his own benefit. Uh, and I'm sorry, uh, as much as they're trying to prove phone calls by Trump and everything else, the evidence that's coming out from the congressional committee on the Biden family wheeling and dealing, going back to Biden being vice president is mind boggling. It's staggering. It defies the imagination. And yet nothing is happening to him. Nothing is happening to him. All right. All right, so I follow Breibart. I follow Breibart for uh, international and political news. I follow New York Post for New York news and also some uh, national news. The New York Post, believe it or not, is pretty conservative. It's pretty conservative as newspaper media, print media goes. All right, so those are my two main sources. And then uh, from a Catholic standpoint, of course, I... Uh, 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 Read life site news. I, I take what I believe is correct and right and useful and disregard the rest. Church militant, I think is a good source. Uh, and then everybody else fills me in on what and how do I decide what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not discerning, discerning. And, and, and I have a common sense meter. Right? I have this meter of common sense that I think comes from being in the state of grace, maintaining a prayer life, maintaining um, uh, uh, an immersion in the Christ's mercy and his light, his light, the light of the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and I have a common sense meter and either something makes sense or it doesn't. And if my initial reaction is that doesn't make sense, I'll do more research. All right. And if my initial reaction is, well, that makes sense to me. I'll keep an eye on it. Right. But there's a, there's an initial reaction that that makes sense or it doesn't make sense. And then I go from there and I will tell you that I'm very seldom wrong. I'm very seldom wrong, I think, because 
My common sense meter is rooted in a practicality that comes from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but that I continually discern, I continually ponder in my heart all things. And I don't take things at face value. I want to know the truth. I seek the truth. And the truth always manifests itself over a period of time. Always, always, always. We saw that with the worldwide event three years ago, the aftermath of the worldwide event, the reactions to the worldwide event. And the truth is now bearing itself out. And I think that that is probably the single biggest um, uh, manifestation of my common sense meter, uh, because uh, everything that I thought from a common sense standpoint was wrong about all that turned out to be wrong about all of that. Uh, again, I mean, the perfect example, right? You have governments the government science collective that for decades had shown itself to not be interested in our health or our lives, right? I mean, how many examples, right? Sexually transmitted diseases come from the pushing of sexual perversion. The sexual perversion pushing promotion has been rampant for decades. Uh, government involved in, in not the, uh, the, the curtailing of AIDS and sexually transmitted diseases through abstinence, but the promotion of a sexual promiscuity that brings about sexually transmitted disease. You want to talk about a pandemic. There's a pandemic in the world, the sexually transmitted diseases. The government science collectives never cared about that, never cared about pushing abortion, never cared about pushing contraception euthanasia, immoral experimentation, right? Assisted suicide, all of these things, all of these things, right? Uh, and then all of a sudden now we come to this worldwide event in 2020 and the government is caring now about our health and our lives. Nonsense. And so if the government said white, I said black. If the government said black, I said white. Uh, there was no way I was going to buy into anything that the government was selling. No way, no shape, no how. And now that is even more evident, more obvious. There is no way I trust the government or the science collective in any way. What's the latest thing, right? That somehow, right, the medical community, which I consider part of the science community, uh, is into transitioning even minors, right? Uh, that somehow there's, there's more than two sexes, more than two genders, and people are saying, well, you know, gender is a social construct. Uh, there's only two sexes, but there's many genders. Or is that vice versa? There's only two genders and there's many sexes. No, I think there's two sexes, male and female, but there's two genders too. That's it. There's two genders, all right? I'm sorry. All right. Uh, God made man and uh, male and female. He made them. Right. That's it. All right. And uh, those are genders. Right. Male and female. Two sexes. Male and female. There's only two. Right. X, Y, X, X. That's it. There's only two. Yet they'll have us believe. All right. Of a gender fluidity from what? The womb? From birth? From 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 the toddlers. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This is just the, the government science community collective uh, desiring to mutilate our children, morally corrupt our children, um, uh, mentally, psychologically bankrupt our children, take control of our children, lay waste to parental uh, uh, parental rights. Uh, and eliminating, all right, uh, child uh, consent so they can influence our children any way, shape, or form. This is evil. This is insidious. Um, and this is just another example of how the government does not care about anyone's life and health. They are all about, uh, they are all about uh, population reduction. Population reduction. That is it. Population reduction.
They want to reduce the population of the earth. They want to reduce the population of the earth by killing anyone and everyone that's not them. So isn't it interesting? They want to reduce the population of the earth by getting rid of everybody else other than themselves. Where the quickest way to reduce the population of the earth is voluntarily step up, lead by example, Right. And and show how much you really care about reducing the population on Earth. It's a simple solution if you think that's a problem. Now, I am against anyone doing that because I don't believe in population reduction. I don't believe in this globalist mindset, right, that we need to reduce the population. God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and take dominion over the Earth. So we take dominion over the earth, we take control over the earth while we are being fruitful and multiplying. The earth is bountiful. God gives us more than enough blessings and grace for us to sustain ourselves on this earth. Any shortages, famines, uh, anything like this are all political. They are not natural. Uh, we have enough resources to feed everyone on the face of the earth. We have enough resources to bring everyone on the earth out of poverty, but it's not going to be the government doing it because they have no interest in doing it. Uh, uh, it has got to be in charity. It's got to be all of us laying down our lives for the least of Christ's brethren, government getting out of the way and letting the church and the people of God do their job. That is how this is all going to come about. It can come, back out, come about in no other way. The government's never shown itself to be efficient or effective. The government has never shown itself to be unselfish, to be charitable. Right. Uh, the government is a, a machine of destruction, a machine of oppression. Every single government has shown itself to be that way to some extent. Many, a lot more than others. Are there some good governments in the world? Yes, there are. All right. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, governments are not effective. They're not efficient. They're not moral. They're not rooted in charity. All right, but the people of God are. The solutions to the world's problems are found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in God, in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the people of God who will lay down their lives for Jesus, for God, uh, by laying down their lives for each other, right? And that's how all the problems in the world should be solved and will be solved if that's allowed to happen. But the governments of the world have no interest in allowing that to happen. And that's why they oppress religion. That's why they oppress people. And that's why there'll always be the problems in the world that we see existing in the world now. These problems in the world are brought about by oppression of people, oppressive governments. The spread of abortion, the spread of sexually transmitted uh, prom sexual promiscuity, sexually transmitted diseases, and then these other, right? These other worldwide events, right? That are, that are, are brought about for population reduction purposes, that's it. And they use it to, to reduce the population. And then, of course, they come up with so-called cures that are going to further reduce the population. All right, I'm Father Stephen Imbrato, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Please go to the website. You can find all the URLs. Uh, I have been on a long time, so I'm going to get it off, but I think it was an interesting uh, live. And so, uh, again, OurLadyOfAmerica.com, OurLadyOfAmerica.com, the approved USCCB private devotion. Uh, Mother Teresa, On the Road for Life, intercede for my On the Road for Life ministry. I intercede for families, intercede for uh, the end of daily mass murder of preborn children. And then, of course, uh, the prayer cards, all the prayers that I wrote. 
You can get these prayer cards by going to protestchildkillery.com. Get my Florida address. Send me a self-addressed damn envelope. When I get back from Ireland, I'll send you a packet of these prayers for every envelope that you send me. And then, of course, we pray for those who have physical and spiritual trials and tribulations every day. My son, John, who took his own life, victims of depression, suicidal ideation, cancer, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, right? All of these uh, ailments, physical and spiritual ailments, eye ailments, vision ailments. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then St. Joseph, my patron saint, pray for us. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, protect us. We didn't even do our opening prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs. Mourning and weeping in his valley of tears, turn them, most gracious advocate, his eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving. O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come. Before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency, hear and answer us. Amen. Christ beside us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ within us, Christ above us, Christ beneath us, St. Patrick, the breastplate of St. Patrick, the Lorca of St. Patrick. St. Anthony, St. Elizabeth, intercede for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the Church, and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world, the end of the daily mass murder of pre-born children. Amen. Again, my first-class relic of Padre Pio and St. Patrick. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Offer up your entire day to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unite yourself to Jesus on the cross. He laid down his life for us. We're called to lay down his, our lives for him by resolving, intending, desiring to lay down our lives for each other. We offer up our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, all of our spiritual exercises, everything that we do, we offer up and we ask our Lord to shed his mercy upon all of our intentions, your intentions, my intentions, all the intentions we hold in our heart and minds, our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, conversion intentions, um, ministerial intentions, uh, the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, uh, for the intentions of all those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day, all of you. We pray with each other, for each other, the souls in purgatory, the church. We talked about all of those. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Share this video, one share per group, one share per page. Mass coming up later. Remember, protestchildkilling.com. Subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channel. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.